Hi, and welcome to Church Online once again. I'm so glad you've joined us today. And I'm coming to you from the empty Kyalami campus. How good is it to be in this building? And I'm looking forward to seeing you all back in church soon. We're trusting God. But in a moment, we're going to cross over to Santon for our live worship from the team over there. But before we do, I just want to mention today that the president has called for today to be a special day of national prayer. So take time today with your family or individually to pray, bring the nation to God, trust God for a cure, and pray for all the people that have been afflicted, all our uh, health workers. And let's really go before God and believe him to really meet our needs today. Well, let's take time now to worship. I want to encourage you to enter in. I'm excited about the teaching of the Word today. I'm really looking forward to teaching from the Word. And if you lean in with me, we're going to get real benefit. But let's really get God's touch on our lives. Let's worship together right now. Here's to the one who made the morning light. Here's to the Starts to shine. Yes, to the one who prays in the dead of night. Move me from the dark, set my heart alive. Hey! Yes, to the one who made my heart to sing. Open up my eyes, wash away my sin. Yes, to the one who gave me life for mine. Broke all my chains, set me free. Is 
Say revival, Lord, say it now. Move. 
done it before, would you do it again? Oh. God. Thank you, God. Thank you for revival, God. Thank you for your grace. Let's sing it up. People come together, strangers, neighbors, our bodies are one. Children of generations, of every nation, of kingdom come. Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up. I don't feel no evil. Fix your eyes. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong.
everyone it's so great to be chatting to you from our Kailami campus today and you know we've got a very interesting week ahead of us as a nation we're going to be moving to level three lockdown and for many of us we might be going back to work our kids could be going to school and you know there's no better way to prepare for the weeks ahead than to sit under the word of God and to be encouraged in worship and how incredible is worship today you know, we've just been declaring who God is, and I just want to remind us that we need to take courage, we need to be strong, we need to hold on. We need to remember where our help comes from, and we need to turn our eyes on Him. He is our restorer, He's our helper, He's our provider, He's our protector, and He's our salvation. And His name is Jesus. Hey, if you don't know this Jesus that we've been singing about or talking about today, you're going to have an opportunity to respond to Him at the end of this service. You know, I'd love to read a couple of verses from Psalm 46, a very encouraging psalm, especially over this period. And I'm going to read to you from the voice translation, just a verse or two, and it says this, God is our shelter and our strength. When trouble seems near, God is nearer and He's ready to help. So why run and why hide? Don't you love that? No matter what we're going through, God wants to help us through our situation. He's closer to the trouble that you are facing right now. Verse 2 says this, No fear, no pacing, no biting fingernails. Now that could be a word for someone today. It says when the earth spins out of control, we are sure and fearless. And you know what? It might seem that like the world is spinning out of control. None of us ever envisaged that we will enter 2020 dealing with what we are dealing with. But you know what we need to, especially as believers, be sure about who we believe in and what we believe. And we need to remain fearless during this time. You know, today you could be saying, Kogi, in my own personal world, it seems like it's spinning out of control. My finances seem to be spinning out of control. My relationships are taking strain, especially during lockdown. My body seems like it's failing. You know, you may be a person that's living alone and it's just highlighted your anxiety or depression. But you know, verse 10 of that exact Psalm says, be still and know that I am God. And today I wanna to encourage us to not be fearful, to be still, know that He is God and He can come through our situations. We need to be creative, we need to be innovative, we need to be intentional and all of that's great, but we need to put our trust in the God of heaven that can get us through our situation. And I'd love the privilege to pray for us today and commit our needs to God. Father, we declare today that you are our strength. We pray for every single need represented here today, big or small, you hear the cries of your people, you know their concerns, Father, and we're trusting that you will come through in every situation. We pray for healing in bodies, Father. We pray for restoration in relationships. We pray where there is lack that you will indeed provide for your people. We pray, Father, for businesses that are struggling, that you will give us creative, innovative ideas to recreate businesses. Father, we pray that they will see abundance in the season and that they will see the benefit in our economy in the weeks and months to come. Father, we declare today that we will stand on your word, that we remain confident that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hi, everyone. I hope you're well on this winterly day. As we come around our giving, I wanted to tell you about a story in the book of John, John 20. It's the story of Mary Magdalene, who came to the tomb of Jesus on the Sunday after he died. When she arrived, the tomb was empty and Jesus was gone. Mary started to cry. An angel asked her a question, but why are you crying? And she said, because they have taken my Lord. What she didn't understand at the time was this. The tomb may have been empty, but the mission remained the same. During this time, we've endeavored to make sure that we can provide a stream into as many households as we possibly can. And during this month, we've delivered 320,000 meals to people in need for food. Also, if you've attended Rivers Church and you haven't had data, we've made sure we've got a way to reach you so that you can get data to watch one of the Sunday streams. Our church buildings may be closed, our campuses may be closed, but the mission remains unchanged. 1 Corinthians 16, 2, Paul speaking to the Corinthian church reads, 
On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. Now you need to know this, if you don't have income right now, we are praying for you, we are praying for your family for full restoration, even more so than before. But if you are able, Paul encourages us here to set aside a sum of money every week. And just like Proverbs 3, 9 tells us, that when we honor the Lord, when we bring our first fruits, that our bonds will be filled. There are many ways in which you can give today. You'll see them listed on the screen. You can give via our direct deposit straight into the church. You can download the Rivers app and give through the app, or you can download Snapscan and there's a barcode on the screen that you can utilize. Before we commit our offering in prayer today, I wanna to encourage you to ready your heart for an incredible word Pastor Andre has planned. But let's commit our offering today. Dear Lord, we bring our offering before you, Lord God, and I ask you to bless the faithful, Lord God. But I also ask you this morning that you would find favor for those in desperate need, blessing upon blessing, in your precious almighty name. Amen. Well, as we get into the word today, I want you to really lean in, make some notes, because I'm excited to teach on this topic. And you have to stay with me all the way through. Don't lose concentration, because if you do, I really believe you're going to benefit. And I'm excited to speak on this topic today. Maybe initially you'll think, oh, gee, but stay with me, because it's going to get really, really encouraging. And I think we're going to see something fresh and new in the scripture. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for this opportunity that we can dig into your word and we can find the treasures and the truths that can help us in our lives. I pray that you'd speak to every person that's watching me online and that you'd cause us to benefit today and to be encouraged and instructed in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I begin today, I want to tell you a story about an Austrian triathlete by the name of Natalie Burley. In 2019, she was out training on her bicycle when a car banged into her and she fell onto the ground. Well, the driver got out and uh, didn't come to assistance. He kidnapped her and took her to his home, uh, a remote house out in the woods, where she uh, was tied up and put in a closet. Well, eventually she woke up, and when she woke up, she was tied to a chair and she was completely naked. And uh, she said that he, she was blindfolded initially and the man started, you know, treating her badly and uh, he forced her to drink schnapps and he held a knife at her. And she knew, man, I, I'm in trouble here. This is a very dangerous situation. Well, anyway, when the blindfold was eventually taken off, she started looking around the house and trying to find a point of connection with him. And she noticed there were a whole lot of orchids all over the house. And so she spoke to him about the orchids and she said, gee, they're very lovely. And she complimented him. And suddenly when she complimented him, his demeanor changed. Well, he began to talk to her and he began to tell her that he was actually a gardener. And he began to tell her that he suffered the death of his father. He had an alcoholic mother and he had girlfriends who had betrayed him. And he started opening his heart. And so she seeing an opportunity here to connect with him, said to him, do me a favor. Let's just forget this whole thing and let's just say it was an accident. And amazingly, it stirred compassion in him and kindness in him. And he said, okay. And he untied her, put her in his car, and he took her home simply because she asked him for a special favor. Well, she got out of the car, went home, reported it, and he was arrested and charged. But it's amazing when you ask someone to do you a special favor, the response in their lives. They kind of are drawn to you. They kind of warm to you. And I don't know if you've ever needed a special favor from God. You know, God is a God who wants to do us special favors. And I've had many, many special favors that God has done for me in answer to prayer. And I have learned how to pray for special favors. You know, there was one occasion when my uh, son was born, Adrian, and he was in an incubator. He was born. He was a gift from God. But his lungs were bad and we needed a special favor. And we went to God and God gave us special grace. And today he's healthy. He sings. He's got an amazing voice. And God's caused his lungs to recover. Then my oldest son, Donovan, was knocked off a bicycle in a very serious accident. 
He was alive. He wasn't killed. So we should have been grateful for that grace. But we went to God and we asked for a special favor. And we asked for his total recovery. And he recovered completely. They said his sight would be affected. His, his brain would be affected. He's a brilliant IT specialist. He writes specialist programs. And we've learned that when you go to God and you ask for special favors, the heart of God is opened to you. You know, we've been given a church that's a thriving church on multiple campuses. In Sandton, we had a church that was in, in five and six services in a building. We should have been happy, but we went to God and asked for a special favor of more land and a bigger building. And through that, God opened up for us the 3,000-seat auditorium that we now have on the Sandton campus. We've learned to ask for special favors. And today, I want to teach you on how to pray for special favors because there's a process that Jesus taught us on how to pray for special favors. John Calvin said this. He said, however many blessings we expect from God, his infinite liberality will always exceed our wishes and our thoughts. In other words, God wants to do much more than we actually ever ask for. That's quite amazing. And then Robert Murray McShane, great man of God, he said, God will either give you what you ask for or something far better. Have you ever thought of that? God wants to do special favors for you. Now, Jesus, in the passage that we're going to read, and we're going to read it in two parts, and I'm going to take a while before I get to the second part, he teaches us the simple principle, but it has a profound effect on our lives when we operate in it. So I'm going to Luke chapter 11 and reading from verse 1, and I'm going to teach from here today. Now, it says, one day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. So they're watching Jesus and they remember John and they say, now we need to learn from you. Teach us how prayer works. He said to them, when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. In other words, not force, not whoever's out there, the man upstairs. No, Father. And then he says, give us each day our daily bread. That's the basics that Jesus taught here. He's teaching us basic prayer. We haven't got to special favors yet, just basic prayer. Then he says, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now we're going to stop there because he then said something further, which takes us to another level of prayer. But I want you to notice here, John was a great man. Jesus was a great man. In fact, Jesus said there's none greater than John the Baptist. However, both of them found it necessary to pray. And here Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. But the problem is we often stop here at the Lord's Prayer. This is actually the foundation before you get to special needs, special favors. And we need to understand here how relevant all this teaching is for us today, especially with businesses and people in crisis and our world going through a difficult, we, many of us need today special favors from God. And I've read the praise reports and I've seen what God's doing, but I've also seen the prayer requests and people are really needing God to do something special. So this teaching is going to teach you on how to pray for special favors. Now, often the objection I've had when people read the Lord's Prayer is they say, oh, well, it's something, you know, the established church does, and they just read it, and we weren't meant to recite it. No, th this was written a long time after Jesus had been raised from the dead and ascended. And so it's meant to be a pattern or a guide for us to pray. So I want to go to it today because I really believe that we need some, we need some answers to prayer and we need to see what the scriptures are teaching. And, you know, Jesus was a teacher. He's probably the best teacher. So let's really get everything out of this passage that he taught. And, and before we get on to the basics here, let me remind you of what Psalm 4 and verse 3 says about this Old Testament pr promise about uh, special favors. It says this, realize that the Lord shows the godly special favor. The Lord responds when I cry out to him. So way back in the Old Testament, there's not just prayer, not just answered prayer, but special favors have been spoken about. So now let's get into the foundations. And I'm going to give you four things today on how to pray for special favors. Number one, make daily prayer a priority. You say, well, Teach me about the special favors. Now, you first got to be able to pray the basics and make daily prayer a priority. Because Jesus prayed daily 
So did John pray daily. And you see how Jesus prayed for special favors and special things and special healings. But he also prayed basically and communed with God. And we need to do that. And the Bible says we have not because we ask not. You can't just go to God and ask for special favors and the rest of the time not talk to him. We need to learn how to pray on a daily basis. I love what uh, George Herbert said. He was a Welsh poet. And he said, prayer should be the key of the day and the lock of the night. In other words, you should start your day with prayer. It should be routine. And Jesus and John made it so. They started the day. They ended the day. And you'll see Jesus prayed at his baptism. Jesus prayed before he chose the 12 disciples. Jesus withdrew alone to pray. And uh, Jesus prayed when the crowds increased and the needs increased. He prayed on the Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, if Jesus had to pray, then surely we need to understand that we need to pray too. And prayer is a bit of a discipline, and it can feel almost like a grind, but it is the answer and the provision for every need. F.B. Meyer, the English pastor, said this. He said, the greatest tragedy of life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer, because we're not in a routine. Now, Pastor Wilma and I pray every day at a set time, and uh, we pray in the morning, we pray in the evening, but we pray together at a set time, during the, especially during this time, because we've got a list of people we work through. We pray for our family, mention them by name, then we pray for our staff, mention them by name, pastors, people we're believing for. And currently there are two people that we're praying for and believing for special favors because they've got cancer. So we bring them by routine in our daily prayer, and then we go into the level of special favors where we're asking God to do something very unusual. And prayer has to be practiced because it's like a muscle. When you don't use it, it gets limp and it becomes weak. And if the devil can get you to not pray, he's won a victory over your life. And so we need to pray and we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our family. We need to pray for our children, our finances, for our emotional well-being, for our spiritual growth, for our businesses. And we need to make it a priority and it needs to be regular and systematic. And that's why Jesus gave them the Lord's Prayer. Now, before we move into that, quickly here, Thomas Watson, the English preacher and author of the 1600s, he said, prayer delights God's ear, it melts his heart, it opens his hand. God cannot deny a praying soul. So you've got to establish a priority of prayer before you can even get to praying for special favors. Now, number two, Jesus' teaching Use God's pattern of prayer. You see, the Lord's Prayer was given as a pattern for our basic, ordinary needs. And it's a profound pattern. Uh, first, there's worship, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You start with just worshiping God and honoring him for who he is and addressing him as Father, knowing that he's our Father in heaven who wants to provide. And, and this is a wonderful pattern for prayer because it deals with God the Father, who we pray to, the Son who forgives us, and the Holy Spirit who leads us. It deals with our past, our sins, our present, our current needs, and our future. Lead us not into temptation. So it deals with the three persons of the God, the three periods of time, and the three phases uh, of, of our lives. It deals with others, ourselves, and it deals with God. And so here, there's this basic prayer, the foundation that you need to pray daily for your basic stuff. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses or our sins as we forgive others. This is like the foundation. And, and, and he, he was teaching that if you do this regularly, you do it by routine, you follow this pattern, then you get to go into the next level, which is special favors. Now, Andrew Murray said this. He said, each time before you intercede, be quiet first and worship God in his glory. That's the Lord's Prayer. You start off there. Father, hallowed be your name. You start in worship. Then he went on to say, think of what he can do and how each time he delights to hear the prayers of his redeemed people. Think of your place and privilege in Christ and expect great things. It's clear that you start with worship. You realize who you are. You ask for your basic needs. You ask for forgiveness. But then there's a different level where you can go into prayer and you can begin to ask for special favors. Now, number three, we need to persist in prayer for special favors. Now, here's where Jesus went on after this to talk about a different level of prayer. And I want to read this because the Bible says that he said it immediately. And often we break it up into two separate things and we keep them far apart, but they're connected. There's this basic level of daily needs, of worship, but then there's the next level of special favors. Luke chapter 11, verse 5, and we pick up again. Then Jesus said to them, 
Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and you say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. Notice here how this person suddenly needs a special favor. There's prayer for the daily basics, but now I need a special favor. I've got an emergency. This is not just give us this day our daily bread. I need three loaves. Something's cropped up. I really need your help. And Jesus explains to us through this kind of parable how we pray for that. Now he goes on to say, the friend says the door is locked. My children are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even they will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Now notice this, so I say to you. In other words, I've used this as an illustration. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. You see, you need to be in basic daily prayer before you can go into the prayer for special needs. You can't just wake up one day and say, I've got a special favor that I need from God and I haven't spoken to him. No, you spend time communing for the basics. Then when you have a special need at midnight in your crisis, maybe your business right now, maybe your family, maybe it's healing. Maybe you're facing a real concern about your future. This is the season for special favors. But you first got to be in daily prayer. Make it a routine. Make it a priority. And now you go into the level where you persist and you call on God for that something special. And you understand there's a different level. Now let's read on. He says here, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? No one would do that. Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, you know what you're like. If you're evil, now to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? In other words, if you know how to do good, how much more will God do good and bless you with special favors here Jesus is teaching that this person came and asked a special favor didn't just ask for another one loaf or two loaves he asked for three you can see it's a clear request for something more but he says you've got to keep on you've got to keep on when you need a special favor from God it's not in your daily praying where you go and you ask for your salary to be you need you need a supernatural breakthrough and I believe there are many people right now who need to persist in prayer knowing who they are knowing that God is their father some of you business people, you're needing God to do special favors. Ask him. Trust him. Jesus here taught us there's the basic level. Then there's the special favor level. So go to God. Say, I need it. I need, I need salaries for staff. I need, I need breakthrough in business. I need some opportunities. After lockdown, I need for you to give me some contracts. Lord, I need my salary. Lord, I've lost my salary. Make it up. You see, here we're taught to persist in prayer for special favors. Woodrow Kroll a uh, American preacher ran a, a radio program. He said this, he said, fervent prayers produce phenomenal results. So what do you need today? Be fervent about it, persist, go and knock on the door, ask, seek, knock. Jesus teaches there's a second level, but if you give up and you're not sure, well, you're not gonna see special favors. And bear in mind, when we ask special favors of people, they tend to warm towards us. Well, that's what happens with God. When you ask him for special favors, he doesn't say, oh, you're asking for so much. Gosh, aren't you satisfied? Are you ungrateful? No, God goes, oh, they trust me. And it warms the heart of God, just like it warms people. And he responds to our needs. Now, if you remember in scripture, there's another uh, person who asked Jesus for a special favor, a woman called a Canaanite woman, Syrophoenician in some translations. She was not from the, uh, she was not a Jew, and uh, yet she came and asked Jesus because her daughter was demon-possessed. And the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 15 that she needed a special favor. Now, how do you get special favors? Well, you've got to persist. You don't, you don't just throw them up into heaven and, or pray on a very surface level. No, you go to God and you don't give up until you get it. She came here in Matthew chapter 15 and she asks Jesus for her request. It says in verse 25, the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. The Gentiles were referred to as dogs. They were outside of Israel. And Jesus is saying, I've come as Messiah for the Jewish people primarily. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to a woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. 
and her daughter was healed at that moment. Isn't it true that we're so easily put off by a no or maybe uh, silence from God? We need to keep going in and asking special favors. This woman did not give up for a moment. She pressed in. She made sure she got her request. And in the end, she got a special favor. She was a Canaanite. She was outside of the tribe of Israel. She was a woman alone in public. But because of her persistence, she got a special favor from Jesus. You see, she had been given a daughter. She had a child. She should have been grateful. No, she said, I want a well child. I want a child that's strong. I don't want a child that's affected by demons. And I want to tell you today, if you've got children that are addicted, children that are in trouble, don't just be glad while my child's alive. Pray for special favors and persist so that your child can be full of God's favor, God's blessing, and be the best that they can be. Leonard Ravenhill, the great revivalist from England, he said, God doesn't answer prayer. He answers desperate prayer and this Canaanite woman was desperate the man who went for the loaves was desperate and when you get desperate and you persist you go to another level and special favor comes into your life number four the fourth thing here and here we're really getting to the crunch and I'm going to take you to another passage in a moment but God wants us to ask for special favors God is not annoyed when we ask for special favors in fact God is almost ready saying what is it you want and um, when you study scripture, have you noticed there are lots of family stories in scripture? Abraham and Sarah and Moses and his family, Miriam and Aaron and David and his family and Absalom and uh, Jacob and, and Leah and Rachel and Laban, his father-in-law. And you read lots of family stories. And the reason they were in the Bible is because they've got spiritual significance. When you study them, you see, hey, this is similar to me and my family. And if God can do it for them, he can do it for me. They're called verisimilitudes because they are, are true likenesses of what God can do in our lives. And I want to read you a family story that's not often read, but it's a wonderful story because it's about Caleb and his daughter, Axa. And you know, when something's mentioned twice in Scripture, the law of twice mention, it means it's important and we can take it to heart and we can learn from it. And here we see how God wants us to ask for special favors. And I want to read from Judges chapter 1. It's also in the book of Joshua. But uh, in Judges 1, it says, And Caleb said, I will give my daughter Axa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sepha. In other words, if you're a go-getter, because I'm a go-getter, Caleb was a go-getter. At 85, he still said, give me that mountain. He was a man who didn't give up easily. So he wanted a go-getter for his daughter. So he said, anyone who takes Kiriath Sepha, I'll give my daughter. And it was traditional to, to do that. And it says, Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, so they were related, took it so Caleb gave his daughter Axa to him in marriage. Now watch. One day, when she came to Othniel, she's speaking to her husband now, she urged him to ask her father for a field. So she's nudging him, hey, you're a go-getter. Tell my dad we need some land. We, 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 we need some, something to produce for ourselves. And so they got it. They got the land. And uh, he gave her uh, produce. Now watch. It says, when she got off her donkey, Caleb asked her, what can I do for you? You see, he gave her land, but now she's coming to him to ask for a special favor, and Caleb's already ready. He's not saying, why are you bothering me? I've given you land. See, she, she got the basics. They got land, but now they wanted something more. Notice here, what can I do for you? She replied, do me a special favor. Since you have given me land in the Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper and the lower springs. You see, she had asked for land, like in the Lord's Prayer, the basics of daily, daily needs. Give me something. I need something to sustain me. But they had no water. They couldn't develop the land. So now she wants a special favor. He's ready and waiting. He, as soon as she gets off the donkey, he says, what do you want? He said, God's ready to bless us with special favors. And so she says, you have given me, now give me also. And what's God already given you? But he wants to give you also. He's given you a business, but he wants to give you a thriving business. He's given you a family, but he wants to give you a happy, blessed, strong family. Not a family full of people that are addicted and weak and full of strife. What's God given you? He's given you a body. You're glad to be alive, yes, but he wants to give you a healthy body. What's God given you? He's given you a job, yes, but he wants to give you something more. You need to learn how to ask him to give me also. And she asked for those springs of water. He gave her not just a little bit, he gave her the upper and the lower. So here we see the principle of special favors. You can ask for the basics, but you can also go beyond because God loves it 
when we ask him for special favors. What special favor do you need from God today? What is it in your life that you need? I've been praying for two people, as I said, who've got cancer. I need God to do something special. They're alive. They're both serving God. They both love the Lord, but I want them to be healed. And so I'm persisting daily. I'm praying in my normal prayer. I'm praying for the basics, but then I'm going to God and I'm pressing in. I'm knocking on the door and I'm saying, God, I need a special favor. I want the health of these two people in my life. I want you to bless them. And I'm praying for my son in England and for his family because I want God to do something special in them. We need to go to God today, whether it's business, whether it's family, whether it's your personal life, whether it's an addiction, whether it's something you're struggling with. Don't say, well, I'm just glad. I'm just glad to have a little bit. No, God wants to do special favors. And when you understand that principle, you'll begin to pray like this on a daily basis. And I think the time that we're in right now requires special favors. I'm sure out there you'd agree with me today that you need special favors. There are business people today who need special favors. And we've seen from the prayer request, many of you need special favors. And you know, when you need special favors, God is drawn to you. Now, as I come to a close, I'm going to pray in a moment. But I want to tell you about Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of America. He was involved with politics and he was in legislature and, and there was opposition. And one day he went to a man who was one of his political opponents and he asked him to lend him a book and the man agreed to lend him the book. They were adversaries and then he read the book and then he returned the book to the man and uh, he thanked him profusely and he said from him asking him for that favor to lend him the book and then going back to him and thanking him, the man was drawn to him and from that time on they became friends and that man began to show him great kindness. That man's heart opened towards him. They became closer when at one time they were adversaries simply because he asked the man for a favor. And you know, that's what happens amongst people. That's what happens when you go and knock up your friend at midnight and say, hey, can you lend me? The favor draws people together. I've discovered that when we draw near to God and ask him for favors, he draws near to us. And James tells us here in this simple verse, James chapter 4 and verse 8, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. So when you go to God and you say, I need you, Lord, and, and you really get close to him and you really persist, suddenly he draws near to you. And I've had people say to me, where is God in my crisis? Where is God in my need? Well, you need to go and ask for special favors. And when you draw near and you begin to believe that he's your father and you begin to ask for special favors, suddenly God draws near. His presence becomes real. He answers your prayers and you see amazing things happen in your life. I want you to trust God today for your special needs. And I want you to trust him and ask him for special favors. Don't just pray. Don't just run through a list. Go beyond and begin to trust God for special favors because from Scripture we can see he wants us to come. And when Aksa came to her father Caleb, we see a picture there of God and us. And he said, what do you want me to do for you? And he gave her upper and lower springs. Maybe today you've got a need. Let's bring it to God. But I also want to say this. There's a picture here in this passage of her asking for the Holy Spirit. And you may not know that today is actually Pentecost Sunday. Today was the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the planet. And here she's saying, you know, I've got land, I've got a father, but I'm dry. And he gave her upper and lower springs. And if you're a Christian today, you say, I'm, I'm serving God, I'm hanging in there. No, no, God wants to give you more than that. He doesn't want to just give you a, a belonging to the family. He wants to give you an infilling and he wants to give you the upper and the lower springs. And you can trust him for the Holy Spirit to overflow in your life because Jesus said you'd get rivers of living water that would flow out of your soul. Well, today, if you've got a need, I'm going to pray for you. And if you want a touch of the Holy Spirit in your life, you might be a successful person. You might have a lot going for you, but there's a barrenness, a dryness. Maybe you're a pastor or leader and you say, man, I've been grinding at this and I've been, you know, I feel like I've got nothing. Trust God for a fresh infilling because he wants to give you upper and lower springs today. Come, let's pray together. Bring your need to him. Bring your life to him. Father, I pray for every person who's heard this teaching today. As we bring our special favors to you and we commit to persist, would you grant us our needs? Healing, breakthrough, breaking of addictions, uh, financial provision, relationships being restored. Lord, so many people are carrying so many burdens and so many needs at this time. 
And I pray for most people who need special favor, because this is a special time we're going through. Special favors. We trust you for whatever they are, and we present them to you today. And we believe that you're a good father who's standing ready to give us what we need right now in Jesus' name. Then I pray for people that need to be filled with the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. Fill them with rivers of living water. Lord, the upper and lower springs. And, and Caleb was glad to pour that out. I know you're glad to pour that out upon your people. Refresh your people. Refresh all rivers, members. If they weighed down and they've been dried out, fill them with living water. And we thank you that you're a God who loves us. You meet our basic needs, but you want to meet our needs in a special way. And we trust you for that going forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I hope you've experienced the touch of God. I hope the simple teaching was profound in its simplicity. And I hope you'll learn to pray by way of routine, that you'll learn to pray uh, at that next level where you persist, where you know that God wants to give you an answer to special favors and you'll experience his richness in your life. If you prayed with me today, and maybe you prayed for the very first time and you've asked God to fill you, Go onto our website. You'll see the wonderful details there on how you can walk with God. You can go on a journey with God. And uh, we've got great resources for you that you can uh, use to grow your spiritual life. I've written a number of books that you can avail yourselves of online. And you can replenish your soul and trust God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and to keep you until we meet again next time online. God bless you all. Come we sing. Father in heaven. Holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father in heaven, lead us now. Temptation, God deliver us from the enemies. We say, Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory each moment all that we need forgive us our sins as we forgive the ones who have sinned against us oh Father in heaven lead us now
we declare Shows is a Your will. 